Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, and we have the Golden Bachelor premiere season finale, a guy's review. We're going to get into this right now. Do me a solid. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind-the-scenes bonus content. We'll be live this morning with a lot to talk about. And also, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast, morning and evening. We take you to work. We bring your rush hour back home from work. So, now, all your pop culture one place. All right, folks? And again, you guys probably already know this, but we're celebrating 12 days of giving this Christmas season. And today, we've got Rachel and Rebecca. Rachel from Bradford, New York, and Rebecca from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There are featured... Uh, gifts, uh, 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 receivers of the day. That's right. Uh, Rachel's got three kids and Rebecca's got four, a young boy there named Blake. And, uh, they, they have heart, uh, warming stories. You can go read about them. Link in the description below. I talked about them on today's, uh, morning rush hour podcast, but if anyone's got the charitable bone in their body, just hit the link and you can donate straight to their uh, home address. Uh, it doesn't show you their address, but it takes the presents right to their home. We appreciate in advance all of the support. Thank you guys so much. All right, so let's get into it. First, I got to say, Jesse Palmer is such a good host. Uh, this is the first thing I could think of. He nails the opening. He's the type of thing you don't notice when it's going well. You don't notice a good host, but man, does he just nail it there to last night at the finale. He's um, just absolutely incredible. Teresa meets Gary's family, and they talk about... About being married. She says she was married for 42 years and shares how her husband passed away after kidney failure and how she can relate to Gary's journey. There's Gary with the kids and or grandkids. You know, they're all just a happy family at this point. Uh, it was a great night for Gary. Uh, obviously very dramatic. I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think the Golden Bachelor proved that the show um, has a rightful place at the table in the Bachelor franchise. It uh, it was a success. It was worth all the time they took casting it, and we'll have to see if, they, uh, if they're able to cast a Golden Bachelorette or whatever they do next with the franchise, but obviously it was successful. Angie, G uh, Gary's daughter, comments how crazy it is that they are uh, bonded with similar life experiences, that being her and Teresa, of course, and uh, Gary's daughters love Teresa's. They want him to propose. His daughter asks if he knocks the boots at Fantasy Suite, which is amazing that they can have these sorts of questions. I would literally die before before I ever asked my parents that. Uh, Gary, uh, <laughs> Gary says, Teresa is always a safe choice, but after Fantasy Suites, it was even better. All right, Gary. Uh, Teresa tells Gary she wouldn't want him to choose her if he isn't 100%. Uh, you know, very logical Teresa is. She's like, look, if I'm not the one, I'm not the one. Don't propose. And he discussed that there's another woman in the mix. He says he won't propose unless he's 1,000% committed to what they have. And that was a very level-headed conversation. Uh, in the next conversation, not going to go as strongly. So then it's Leslie's turn. And this is, uh, this is a rough one. So I've got another video coming up after this, which is going to discuss more of what was said in the fantasy suites and things like that. Any information that came out after the show. I'm going to stick strictly to what I watched during the show here. Uh, but hit the like button and subscribe for that next video that's going to be coming right after this. All right. Leslie's turn. They had a good chat, but Leslie says she could tell he wasn't himself. His mannerisms are different. You know, it's very interesting because after the fantasy suite, I think they said the opposite. I think after the fantasy suite, he was taken aback by how good of a time he had with Leslie and was then questioning if it's no longer Teresa in the front running. So, you know, there was a jockeying for position one, position two here, but obviously we'll see how that all shakes out. They cheers to start fresh again with red wine. And Leslie says she loves this guy. I mean, she is not making her feelings unknown. We'll never accuse Leslie here of uh, holding her cards tight to the chest. She uh, absolutely uh, was painfully uh, open and honest about how she felt and good for her. That's kind of the way you have to do it. You got to run a thousand percent into the brick wall and hope that you smash through it. Or, you know, some cases you don't, but you got to give that effort. Leslie says she can't imagine being without him. She says that's huge. She says she loves him very much. And he says 
that's such a special sentiment in that he can feel it. And at this point, we know Gary's playing the cards the producers have for him. In any normal relationship, you'd pursue one versus the other, and you probably wouldn't have all these magnificent options. And uh, I mean, Gary truly in an untenable situation. I'm sure if Leslie was in the situation, she wouldn't fare any better. Any better. This is exactly what the producers want. I'm just always so devastated, uh, you know, at the heart condition of someone like Gary in his 70s and Leslie as well. Uh, for like, gosh, can we? Sh- is it playing with fire to put people through such terrible, heartbreaking moments at this age? I don't mean to baby them, but you know what I mean. Um, the way this conversation ended was fascinating. I guess a lot is said without words. I wasn't entirely sure what was happening. I was watching this conversation play out um, in a group chat on my Discord. Link in the Instagram if you want to join our uh, chat community over there. And I was like, what happened? Did, it, did I miss something? I blinked. I looked down at my pizza. I came back up, and it was gone. And I said, it's the old uh, Zach Brown song, I saw goodbye in her eyes. And, he saw, and she saw goodbye in his eyes, I guess. He knew that she knew that something was off says he needs to go back to talk with her. She opens the door crying. So that conversation was brutal to watch. Watching this play out with a live audience is pretty wild. How frustrating and heart-wrenching. Of course, there's Jesse Palmer consoling Gary. Leslie tells Gary that everything he told her was a lie. Leslie says, we weren't off, you were off. You know, it's very interesting with this breakup is that normally... You, they break up and they're still in so much shock that they don't get to their like bitter feelings. Uh, and I think it's healthy to share your bitter feelings, but normally that's shared at the like live after show. You're just so heartbroken. In this moment, Leslie was kind of broken up with, and then moments later, she was already bitter. And I can understand, absolutely. Gary says everything he told her at the moment was the truth, but things have changed and it was heartbreaking. Gary apologizes, says if he knew he'd caused this much pain, he'd never take this journey. She breaks down in tears. She says, I can feel however the F I want, and the audience cheers. She is sobbing. How sad. She absolutely rips him, questions how he can say I love you and then change your mind the next day. And look, this is the uh, this is the issue. You know, for years the lead never said I love you. Because the I love you used to be like the moment where you you say it to one person, it's like that big, I love you, I've always loved you, oh my gosh, me too. But now we've got him saying it to multiple people, so you've got them already thinking they've won, and that probably makes the heartbreak that much more. She shreds him, questions uh, uh, you know, all of his intentions. She said, I poured my heart out, fell in love with you, fell in love with your family today. She says, at least she doesn't have to walk down in her $60,000 dress and be completely embarrassed, and that's what she thanks him for. Now, as I'm watching this, eating my frozen Aldi's veggie pizza, I was like, huh, what? I had my flat Diet Coke with no ice, and I was thinking, whoa, $60,000 dress. We need to get her to sign up for our Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal, because at that price, uh, you know, clearly she can afford uh, the $12 tier. Um, uh, she says, I'm, I'm blown away, and, and Gary has the best answer. He goes, I'll see myself out. You know, there's just a moment in your life Maybe this is a guy thing. Maybe this is a girl. I don't know. But there's a moment in your life where you realize you're not going to improve the situation and you just go, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go. Gary's going to go home and eat some of that frozen Aldi's pizza with me. Gary talks with Jesse and says, I took a good person and broke their heart. I hate myself. Leslie arrives to the show in her poor dress, which is the $45,000 dress. But yeah, that was the the rawest moment we've seen uh, from Gary where he's so mad at himself for probably not just being heartbreaking, like he channels his anger as if he's mad that he treated these women this way, which he should be to an extent, you know, I don't know. Uh, He tried his best, right? Uh, But at the same time, he's probably mad that he actually let the show get to him that way. Like I got so serious. You, you always have that moment. Remember Katie Thurston when like she wanted, she wanted to leave the show and she's like taking her earrings off and taking it. You just have that moment, that beautiful Truman show moment where you want to break out of this hellscape. Um, and that's when the show gets real. And that's why you watch the first 10 episodes to get to that moment. Right. Um, because we're all just fans in the gladiators Coliseum. That's all it is, folks. Uh, we're not, we're no better than those that watch people uh, kill themselves as they fought lions. Lions uh, in the old gladiator days. We're just watching people rip their own hearts out of their chest. Uh, just remember that, folks. We're no better. We're just uh, dressing a little nicer and our cars run a little cleaner, but we are just 
absolute savages out here. Uh, you and I know better. Okay. <laughs> She's in fire today. Um, so anyway, yeah, she tells Gary she had already written her vows at that point. Leslie tells Jesse she was just so sad. Was a 100% certain she was with girls. Uh, with his with his girl wait she was a hundred percent she was a hundred percent certain she was his girl and things he said to her at the overnight proved that I don't know exactly what she's talking about but I think we're gonna pick that up on the next episode uh, after this video we'll get to the next one Gary arrives and hugs Leslie a prolonged hug I should say Gary tells uh, Leslie tells Gary she fell in love with him for so many reasons. She explains all the reasons why she was devastated. I mean honestly she talked for like thirty hours straight. It was pretty. It was pretty excessive, but, you know, good for her for sharing her truth. There was a lot of truth to share. Gary apologizes and says, I don't know if I can accept it, but I'm thankful. Or she says, I don't know if I can accept your apology, but I'm thankful for it. Okay. Uh, okay, Teresa's turn. So she's heading to the altar. She says she's never thought she'd find love again. They see each other. They embrace. Teresa says she thought she was going to live the rest of her life alone until she met Gary. She says, you're not the person I can live with. You're... Gary says, you're not the person I can live with. And then she's like, huh, what? He's like, you're the person I can't live without. I think I butchered that quote. Gary did it better. He gets down on a knee, says, every day I choose you. She says, yes. She says, yes. She says, yes. Uh, Teresa accepts the final golden rose. Gary and Teresa appear live, and the audience gives them a standing ovation. Teresa says she didn't tell her sisters. I get it. My sisters can't keep a secret either. My sister was the last person I told I was pregnant. You want to get a secret out there? You need good press? You, you, need, you need the whole world to know your secret? Tell my sister. Well, Gary says he doesn't want to kiss and tell. In the fantasy suite, Teresa says she knocked his boots off. So that's what happened there. Let's go. There's the there's the altar. I was wondering, was this a 14 karat gold or was this plastic? It would have been pretty cool if like the winner got an actual like solid gold rose. That would be pretty cool. Um so anyway, then we have uh, Jesse sends them on a vacation to Italy. Very nice stuff right there. And then afterwards, we find out they're not wasting any time with this knock and boot nonsense. They're getting married January 4th, 2024 on the Golden Bachelor wedding. And of course, we'll have that show here. Maybe we'll all dress up in our favorite formal gear. We'll be covering it. I got a lot to get to today, folks. It's going to be all hands on deck day. So stick around. We'll be back with more content right after this. <laughs> 